Turkey. How about a gouge you, huh? In the face! Sheila! Sheila, wake up! What? What? Where am I? Definitely not the devil's urinal you were screaming about. I'm not? I'm not. I'm not! Oh, thank God! Sheila! Get a hold of yourself! You're ruining your hair! Sheila! Honey! Wake up! You were having a bad dream, or a mild nightmare. Norm, tell me we don't live in a trailer in the canyon. Honey, I wish I could, but that would be lying, and I only lie to you when you ask me about your weight. Just like it says I should in the rule book you gave me. Damn it! I knew my hair looked too good to be true. God, this place must really be getting under my skin. Oh yeah, mine too. See? <laughs> Her. Why? She'd be less funny to look at. Hello, can you go? Well, now you know. The family drive to Canoe's Dive. The next stop straight drop will tear. Oh, That's a hole There's no escape. That's bad luck, so settle in. Yes, Jack. In Crash Canyon. That's how you get away with a successful Ponzi scheme. Thank you. Thank you, Jake, for that criminally enlightening presentation. Please no one do it. Now it's time to write some more of our class story. Roxy, I believe it's your turn to add a sentence. And brave Sir Dashing wasted no time calling the Princess Roxy. Taxi to take her stupid butt face back to the throne. She had grown too fat to fit in anymore and... Great. It's out of ink and I was on a roll. It's okay. Every problem is an opportunity. And this is an opportunity for us to take a field trip to the dump to look for another pen. Can somebody carry me? I got the snakes again. <laughs> Gross! I feel like I'm walking inside Uncle Vern's mouth. Speaking of Vernon, there he is! What? It's called a dump for a reason! That looks just like the Ark of the Covenant from that movie. When you open it, your face melts off like Joan Rivers. Hey, Roxy! I got something to show you! <laughs> Baby monitors? Baby monitors? Really? Boy, this is exciting. Mom, if you're pregnant, I will puke myself inside out. Are you? Oh, I can start a gender pool. Boy, girl, or whatever Roxy is. Your boobs are gonna get huge. Like this picture I drew of you. You're not pregnant in this one. You just have huge cans and are washing my scooter in short shorts. Oh, what a proud family moment. I'm not pregnant. My ovary is no better than to disobey me. But just like a baby, these are gonna make for a sleepless night as I use these monitors to build something that'll help us get out of here. Escape! Then get to it! Right now! That could be the hormones. Pregnant chicks get nuts with all sorts of cravings and stuff. Who knows what you'll crave next? If it's a sandwich, give me one too! Ta-da! I did it! I've turned the monitors into a giant solar transmitter. It will shoot an audio wave up to the sky, sending our distress signal to the nearest satellite. Wendells, let's go home. Is that even possible? On TV, no. But here in the real world, of course. Maybe I just need to make a little adjustment. I give up. I should just stick to what I do best. Not doing anything best. <laughs> Dad, are you crying? <laughs> what? Crying? Me? <laughs> yes. Don't worry about this. Lots of people are trapped places. Prisoners in jail, hell's wives in loveless marriages, fat guys in their apartments until the fire department comes. It was the Coast Guard genius. That's what happens when you live on a houseboat. Thanks for the pep talk, son. And it worked. I've got my pep back. I just hope I didn't wreck the energy grids up top. Meh. Even if you did, people might actually stop watching TV or playing video games and go outside. Why isn't your head exploding? I don't know, it should be. 
Well, at least that's something. Fancy Frida Chino. <gasps> Me too. It's as delicious as a guy I dated in Italy once for an hour. He dated a guy? Don't get any ideas. It ain't gonna happen. Hola, Jake and Jake's dad. Do you want some coffee? Boys don't drink coffee. This isn't Europe. Oh, Stefan knows. Do not remind him of the cruelty. Just a ginger ale, Frida. Montreal, 1971. The FLQ had the city in the clutches of fear. By the glory of cheese and mistresses, you are an affront to style. Faction must be avenged. <gasps> oh, it was terrible. You could fit a family inside one pant leg, you know? Hey, Norm. Good to see you stop crying. <laughs> I hate tears I didn't cause. What? <laughs> How did you know I was crying? I heard you. On this. Hey, you stole that. Don't feel so special. I steal one of everything in this place. Earl heard me all the way over at his place. Do you know what this means? I'm more like mom emotionally? Yes, but also that I can't broadcast to the world. But I can broadcast to the canyon. Frida, open another bottle of ginger ale. The canyon's about to get its first radio station. Gummy, speak to me. Tell my mother I love her. She's a coffee table at a cottage in Muskoka. Ah! Ah! Are we there yet? No secret is worth what this is doing to my mascara. Okay, everyone, brace yourself. I present to you WNDL, the canyon's newest, best, and only radio station. Instead of getting us out of here, I made the here we're stuck in better. How about that? I wish I was dead, starting right now. Isn't it cool? And it's interactive. Jake delivered monitors to everyone yesterday, so if our listeners press their monitors, that green button is for go ahead, caller. But you don't know anything about being a DJ. Whatever DJ stands for. It stands for disc jockey. What's a disc? A small, flat, round object like a plate? What's a jockey? A really short person who rides a horse? Midgets and plates. I knew that's how radios worked. You know, kids, in college I had my own radio show. My sidekick was a robot I made called The Bot, and we ruled the airways for three glorious days. Until we were suddenly replaced by the new hot thing, burpy and farty in the morning. Whoa! Looks like we have a request. Go ahead, caller! Burpee after a shaken can of soda and farty after Indian food left in a hot car for three days. I thought we could run WNDL together as a family, like the Osmonds Sing or the Manson's Murder. And the best part is, we all get our own show. What? Norm, no! You know I hate public speaking. And now to accept her yellow blazer and say a few words, Realtor of the Year, Sheila Wendell. I know, honey. That's why I gave you the overnight shift. You don't have to talk. Just play this cassette over and over and over and over again. Lil Wayne. Boy, that guy will sing on anything. Okay. I can do that. I'm in. Terrific. Jake and Roxy, you guys fill out the day, and me and my partner will take the morning. Partner? That's right. The bot is back. Where'd you get the tea? I don't want to talk about it. Good morning, Canyon. This is Norm and the bot coming at you from WNDL. So, what's new with you, bot? Someone has a potty mouth. <laughs> This is Roxy on fashion. Look at this ugly dress. <laughs> I know, right? We're talking Canyon Cup Hockey. If you have an opinion, bring it. Don't suck and don't be a Roxy. I think Colton should get to play more. By the way, this is not Colton. <clears throat> um, it's 3.56 a.m. And, uh... Are you listening to 
your show last night. What? Why? Why would anyone do that? It wasn't bad. It was weird but enjoyable. Like seeing a clown drown in a mall fountain. I agree. Even with the horrible music and the hyperventilating, you're still the best thing on that station. Really? Are you joking? Of course not. This schmuck can't joke. He's incapable of saying anything funny. Ever! <laughs> Looks like someone woke up on the wrong side of the box this morning. <laughs> you see? You need to be on more when people are listening. Like right now. The morning. Oh, no. That's Norm's time slot. And he's, he's the best. Oh, really? What did chemical engineer A say to chemical engineer B? He said, you beaker, you broader. <laughs> oh, hey! Oh, oh. Bob, what are you doing? I didn't program you for this. Oh, why would I? Oh, oh, hey! Oh, my gosh. I hope he's okay. Sheila, slight emergency. I need you to take over the show while I'm trying to save my groin from being mashed into pulp. Norm, I can't. I'm not comfortable with that. Please! My crotch may die today. Don't let it die in vain. <coughs> oh, thank God! Uh, um, go ahead, caller? Hi, Sheila. It's Vernon. First time caller. Long time admirer. But you knew that, right? Because of the picture I drew? Where you had the huge cans? And the short shorts? Washing my scooter? You all lathered up in the soap? And you just kind of... Would it kill you to get surgery? Would it kill you? Let's not be fat jerk. If you weren't my husband's cousin and he wasn't being savagely abused by a crotch-seeking robot right now, I'd grab your double chin and I'd drag you out to the woods where you would be rot away and die. Then I'll lick your fat bones, bleach in the sun until the day I come back and build a playground out of them. That's right, a playground with a slide and swings and a fort in what used to be your rib cage. Wow. Mom's not nervous at all when she's furious. I know. Think how confident she'll be when she sees my report card. <laughs> Kids, we'll play t-ball with your femur and have lots of fun because you died. Your death would bring pleasure to children and the rest of the world as well. So what are you waiting for? Stop denying us our joy, fatty. Woo! <laughs> Denting sure takes away the nerve, huh? Mm. Ah, one thing I can't complain about, though, is Frida's coffee. I don't know where the beans come from, but when it's this good, I'm not asking. <laughs> she blocked my coffee! That's free advertising! Like the time my boyfriend wrote all about me on the men's room wall! Oh no, wait. I wrote my name there. That's how I met my boyfriend. Hey. <laughs> Good coffee, but what's the deal, y'all, with the tipping? Kay? I mean, it's not like it's a real restaurant. It's a coffee truck. And go ahead, caller. How dare you judge how I make my living? I'm just saying we shouldn't have to do it at your place or... Why not, Pat? I mean, it would save us a lot of money. Oh, no. I was on board when it didn't affect me, but this just got personal, sister. I am now officially off board. <laughs> This is bad. 15 to 20% bad. Oh, I don't know. Her comment kind of made sense to me. I have two of them? You could totally have Zac Efron's right eye, Nick Jonas's left eye, and Chase Crawford's upper lip. You're listening to My Perfect Guy with Roxy Wendell. Next, I'll ask, what if the Jonas Brothers were just one handsome only child? Prepare your mind to be blown. That bot has lowered the quality of radio programming and also lowered my sperm count. This ends now. Gotcha. You bucket of bolts, you pile of processors, you... French man? Stefan! I'm sorry, I was trying to capture a rogue morning show robot. I was on high alert that evening. Things were getting ugly. I mean, really ugly. Okay. I have to run, so I guess I'll just leave you alone with your nonsense. Hang in there. <laughs> Hang in there. If we get out of here, I am so sending that into Reader's Digest. Ah, oh, hi, Nellipat. Hello, Frida. Can I get a sandwich? Chick fight. Chick fight. You cannot have a sandwich or anything else unless you apologize on air for your filthy lies you are banned from eating here. Oh, 
Baby, this is getting so hot. And you are also banned from my establishment. Now it's a threesome. Oh, yeah. Every guy's dream. Banned? Banned? I just found my voice and I refuse to quiet it now. If you think you can bully me, you're wrong. Dead wrong. Well, yelling is really hard on the throat. How about a T? No, banned. Still? Well, now I really mean what I said. I can't believe it. Banning me? Me? The voice of the people? They are people. Don't they know I'm their voice? You know what I say, Mom. Don't get mad, get even. Like I did when I spread that rumor Nancy Horton's mother was a prostitute because she wore the same sweater as me to school. Even though that story is disturbing, it's not bad advice. I'm taking this fight to the airwaves tomorrow. That is, assuming your father isn't available to do his show. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I won't be. So, in response to Frida and Malapat banning me, I ban all my listeners from patronizing their places. Boom! What do you think of that? So, if you're listening, listeners, do not go to Frida's or Nalapat's. Or if you're there, walk out. Or if you're sad, do your best. Wait! Aren't you forgetting something? My business is quieter than a mute that stubbed its toe. I even offered to sell booze to children, and still nothing. She started this. We have to do something to get even. That's the Juarez way. Well, Dummy does have an idea. I'm all orejas. That's how you say ears in Spanish. While we conspire, we may as well learn, too. Boy, it feels good to know I stuck to my guns, and you all supported me, and we are not going to back down, either. I will be bound and gagged before I'm bound. <laughs> Actually, only pound. We never thought of bringing a gag, but it would have been a good idea, yeah? Next time, we'll put it in the budget. Frida, now a pass. Let's talk about this. I'm here too, jackass. Right, of course. Anyway, all of you, please let Sheila go. We want our tips back and our customers. Oh, and a helicopter. Not a charter, but a military one that we're not supposed to know about. One that can go to space. And I know they exist because Colton told me. You promised to keep that a secret. No, Mom! Enough screwing around. You have to negotiate for my release. Right. Sorry, honey. You know how bad I am at negotiating. What did you buy? Damn it. That hat guy was an excellent negotiator. I wish he was here now. Norman! Okay! This is just so stressful. I've never been in a hostage situation before. I don't have the training. I have an idea. Sheila, just stay put till I get back. Unless they let you go. Then don't wait around. Just go home and I'll meet you there. No! Okay! Attention, soldier! You have a new assignment. A woman's being held hostage and you're in charge of the rescue mission. Can I count on you? I don't know. The man that took her is wearing a turtleneck sweater under a suit blazer. And no belt. Let's do this. <laughs> How could you screw it up so bad? I had mud in my eyes. What do you want from me? Give me back my dummy! Of course. Now, on behalf of Stefan and I, I just want to apologize for... No. Negotiate! My wife in exchange for dummy! No way! She says she's wrong about the keeping, and then we let her go. No deal! <laughs> oh, I'm tired of running. Let's settle this now! So this is where my fear of public speaking has gotten me. Tied up, watching my husband fight a robot made out of baby monitors. Oh, we can't keep going like this. We need Dummy. He was the brains of the operation. I agree with that. Oh, so glad you agree with us for once. Too bad you don't agree that tipping is a way to reward good service and something we count on. Too bad you don't agree with that. Listen, Frida, I'm sorry it came to this. I was scared and I needed something to complain about to avoid stammering. Your coffee's great. And so is your service. It deserves a tip. Would you mind saying that again? The microphone wasn't on. Everyone, 
I take back what I said. Frida and Nalapad both deserve your tips. <laughs> Everything seems back to normal. Yep, after you and Frida burnt down the station and I beat up the robot and put sutures in my crotch, everything's back to normal. Better than normal, thanks to you, Normie. For Dummy, you negotiate us two free coffees and front row seats at Nellipats for the kids. The backstroke. <laughs> I know that robot tried to kill Dad, but I feel sorry for it right now. Are there midgets and plates in that, too? drink things that turn me violent. Thanks, anyway. Well, this has drugs in it. All sorts of crazy drugs. Ones I'm too young to even know about. Yeah? Okay. I'll get my buzz on. Lemonade! Only two teas. Guaranteed to remove wrinkles. It'll make any boy you like fall in love with you. And it's an amazing flea repellent. Oh. This stuff will fix any problem. Medical, financial, and especially moral. I'm back. Thanks for watching the stand for me. Any business? Nah, sorry. 